episode three, Jikan ga kawarimasu. Time is changing. Konnichiwa, minasan, and welcome to Elizabeth Goes to Miyazaki, Japan, Watashi wa Elizabeth Des. I'm Elizabeth. And today, Jikan ga kawarimasu. We're going to talk about time is changing. But first, Ishukan do osukoshi deshita ka? How was your week? I think last week I talked about how hot it felt and summer didn't seem to be leaving, but this week it definitely feels like fall is in the air, as much as that feels like in Southern California. So while we don't get interesting colors in our trees, they go from green to brown to fall into the ground. <laughs> um, you can't help but get into the spirit of fall because Halloween is right around the corner and the time is literally changing, I think next week. And you just kind of want to snuggle up under a blanket for a few minutes. I mean, it hasn't gotten that chilly, but the idea of snuggling up, it's that time of year. So anyway, in today's show, Kyo, Watashi wa nani o sukuru desho? Today, what am I making? Uh, we're making irona onigiri nogu, a variety of onigiri fillings, or side dishes that can be incorporated into onigiri. So if you saw episode one, I demonstrated how to make that, but you'll see it again soon. And then in today's cultural note, we're talking about Nihon Hyojunji, Japan Standard Time. All right, let's start. Akimo fukamari haru ga tounoki mashita ne. Akimo fukamari haru ga tounoki mashita ne. Asa o kitte mo soto wa matta usukurai desu. Asa o kitte mo soto wa matta usukurai desu. あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、あれ、
But before we start seasoning our fish, we need to turn on a pot of water for it to start to boil. So first step with your salmon and your salt is seasoning. And you can be generous with this. Uh, it's almost like brining. Just make sure your fish is coated in salt. <clears throat> and then into the Ziploc bag. Because we will actually be cooking the salmon in the hot water. Your salmon's in the bag. And seal. All right, our water is boiling. We have our fish ready to go. So really all you're gonna do is put your Ziploc bag of fish into your pot of water. Let it cook for 30 seconds and then turn the heat off and let it sit for five minutes. And this is just another way to cook the fish so that it still remains nice and firm and tender. And even though you added quite a lot of salt, uh, the fish will not become too salty. The fish will actually become seasoned nice and evenly. All right, so our salmon has sat and this is what it looks like. And it is a little, a little warm, but you can see in the bag there's a little bit of liquid here. All right, so into our bowl. And we don't need this anymore. And we're going to start flaking up our fish. But while I'm doing that, we can get started on the sauce. So for the sauce, we're gonna use uh, sake and mirin and soy sauce. But the first two ingredients that will go into the pot first are the sake and then mirin. All right, so we're at the stove. We're gonna add our sake and mirin. And the reason why I'm just adding these <clears throat> with the heat off is because there is uh, an alcohol content in these ingredients. And if you're not careful, you can start a flame. So really what we're doing here is we're getting these two ingredients started so that the alcohol level or the alcohol can cook off and it'll be ready to um, be used for our sauce once it cooks and begins to reduce. So you can see it's come to a boil. That's what you want it to do. Uh, I just have this on medium heat and that will that's high enough to let it do its thing while we do our salmon. So of course you can do this with a fork, but you can also do it with chopsticks. All right, so our salmon is flaked. You can see, still see that it's, it has lots of chunks, but it will break down a little bit more as we stir it around in the pan. So our uh, meeting and sake has reduced and you are ready to add your salmon slowly into the pan. The heat has been turned down to low, but if you don't feel comfortable doing this step with the heat on, please turn it off and then turn it back on again. So just into the pan. And then we're going to add our soy sauce. And turn the heat back up a little bit, not too high. I want this to cook a little bit longer. Reduce a little bit more. It's not going to become 
a thick sauce or anything like that, but it'll be a nice coating for the fish. And again, it will flavor the rice, the onigiri, really nicely. All right, we are going to make a, a tuna salad or really tuna mayo Japanese style. So for this, we are gonna need tuna. And this is just regular uh, canned tuna. Uh, we have soy sauce, of course, mayo, and salt. So this is a really easy one. So for this, we're gonna just start with our mayo here. <clears throat> we have a tablespoon of mayo. And to this, we're gonna add our tuna. And then we're going to add our soy sauce, a teaspoon of soy sauce. and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And so we, because we're adding salt, you wanna make sure <clears throat> whatever tuna you buy uh, is sodium free. And then nice and easy, we're gonna mix our tuna together. And we don't want to make it mushy. You want to just keep it flaky and as chunky as possible. And you're done once it's all combined. And now that's ready to be added to your rice. And now we're gonna make our takana or mustard leaf uh, filling. So for this, you're gonna need mustard leaf. We have 100 grams of mustard leaf. You will need some salt, rice vinegar, sesame oil. We will need a quarter teaspoon of chili pepper. We will need a teaspoon of sesame seeds a tablespoon of meeting and a tablespoon of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of sugar, and we're gonna be using a, a tablespoon of our vegetarian or our mushroom dashi broth. Okay, so our first step to prepare our mustard leaf for cooking is to season it. So what you're gonna do is take your salt. This is a, a coarse kosher salt and you're going to kind of massage it into your mustard leaf. And this is just a different way to season, just like that. Nice way to get it evenly coated. And then our next step will be to uh, rinse our leaves off in cold water. Okay, so I've massaged the mustard leaf enough that you can see that it has gone down in volume like that. You can see it looks really moist and this is what you're looking for um, after you've massaged your uh, salt into the greens. So then the next step is to, as I said, cold water. Like that and then you're gonna take it away like that. And that's just gonna rinse out the salt that did not get absorbed by our greens. Our final step uh, before we start cooking our uh, mustard is to add our vinegar, but first I'm gonna turn on our pan so we can start heating up. So we'll just start medium high and then we'll turn it down once we're ready to cook. So this is our vinegar. We'll just add a little bit of acidity to our greens. And just gonna mix it up. All right, so we are ready to start cooking. Our pan is hot. 
and we are going to be using a teaspoon of sesame oil. Right at the bottom like that. And adding our things, turn it down a little bit. And now we'll start adding our other ingredients. So first we're going to add our chili flakes. That's a quarter teaspoon of our chili flakes. Sprinkle that around and obviously if you don't like chili, you do not have to use it. I'm going to add a teaspoon of the sesame seeds. Teaspoon of sugar. And finally, a tablespoon of our dashi liquid. And these are some common ingredients, and I'm trying to heat back up again. And a common flavor profile in Japanese cooking to combine sweet and salty. So this is what it looks like and we're going to let it cook down and our uh, leaves and our stems will become nice and tender and really flavorful. Now we're going to make kimpita with chicken breast and kimpita is um, use making burdock root, just like this, and carrot. We're going to add uh, ginger. We have our chicken, as I said, sesame oil, meeting, soy sauce, a little bit of sugar, and finally we're going to use our dashi stock. So our first step is to clean our burdock root. So, you know, wash it off first and then you need to peel it. So to do that, into smaller pieces so that you can manage because it is quite long. Put that to the side and what you're going to do is use the back of your knife to peel the root and you're just taking off this brown uh, skin and as you peel it the uh, scent I will say of burdock is released. It's really earthy smelling really nice uh, burdock isn't commonly used in Western cuisine, but you can find it uh, in teas. Oops, I don't want to go too deep. Just like that. Okay, all right, once you have your burdock peeled, just want to give it, cut it off like that, and then cut into smaller uh, pieces. So. I have seen uh, kimpita made with slices of burdock and carrot, but we're going to do uh, a small dice. So, you know, do it any kind of way feels comfortable to you, but make sure your pieces are even and small. So, really nice, small. All right, once you have your burdock sliced, you need to soak it in cold water to remove some of the uh, bitterness and sort of a harsh flavor that is in the root. 
So you let it soak for uh, like five, 10 minutes, but we also want to keep the color. So for that, you're just gonna add a splash of vinegar. All right, we are ready to make our king pita with our chicken breast. So you should have your burdock root already soaked. Uh, make sure you have your carrot, your burdock, and your uh, ginger cut in a similar size as possible. Your chicken in small dice. Uh, we need to heat up a teaspoon of sesame oil in our pan. So let me get that going to cook. And then we have uh, a tablespoon each of our soy sauce in our meeting. We're going to add a teaspoon of sugar and half a cup of the dashi liquid. All right, so to start, as I said, we're going to heat up our sesame oil. And we're gonna cook our chicken first. So just added my teaspoon of the sesame oil. Since you cut your chicken so small, it cooks pretty quickly. So now we're at our, our veggies. There we go. And I've got the heat on medium high. That you need to add a little bit more oil. So I'm going to add maybe another teaspoon of oil. I'm going to get that turned around, get everything coated, and then start adding the rest of our ingredients. So adding our meeting, middle of the pan, adding our soy sauce. Gonna get that stirred in. Alright, into our sugar. Teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to use two halves because I use my teaspoon for the sesame oil. And half a cup of our dashi broth. So the technique is really a saute and then simmer. Let's just make sure everything is coated like this. And then it will start to boil and then it will reduce. Kinkita has come to a boil. So your next step is to bring it down to a simmer and cover and let all of this reduce. All right, so we finally reached the final, final steps, and it's time to start shaping our rice balls. So for our Takana mixture, our mustard green mixture, we have about 300 grams of rice, and we're going to mix in our, our greens. Here we go. 
So we have our uh, onigiri ready to go. So again, remember from our first episode, <clears throat> dampen your hands a little bit. This is a hands-on action. And grab your rice, your palm-sized amount of rice, and start to shape. Flip to make it nice and even. Okay, there we go. And I make mine a little smaller than you would find in like a convenience store in Japan, but you can make these as large or as small as you would like. This is like a, a kid-friendly size onigiri. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna make our uh, tuna mayo onigiri. So for the takana, I mixed the uh, mustard with the uh, rice, and also with the chicken kimpita, we mixed it with the rice. But for our salmon and our tuna, the mixture will actually go on the inside of our, our onigiri. So again, make your hands a little damp because we're not mixing in our filling. Our, with the rice, we're putting it inside. Gonna put a little bit of salt on your hands as well. Take your rice, and then first you want to make a little bit of a hole inside because you're filling it with our mix. Not too much, like that. And then make your hands wet again, cover it, and then go back to shaping your Again, if you, it's sticking to your hands, just stop and get your hands wet again. Make sure you rotate. All right, so I'm done. Got our rice, and for our final step, I have a little bit of, I have a nori strip here, and you can use that to add the final detail. Just trying to make it even on both sides. Just like that. And then onto the plate. Today's cultural note is a quick one, and it's to share with you that Japan only has one time zone, Japan Standard Time, JST and that is nine hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. So it doesn't matter whether you're at the top of the country or at the bottom, time is always the same, unlike here in the States where if you move from east to west, you are three hours behind New York, for example, if you're living uh, in California. And I have to say, I think that's pretty cool. They just have one time for the whole country. And that is the show. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely had a lot of fun. I thought the Japanese was, was fun because we have so many traditional phrases around time change, spring forward, fall back. And it was, I thought it was just kind of fun to translate those phrases into, into Japanese and play around with that. And also our cooking segment, it was a little longer than usual but I thought it would be fun to just show that um, onigiri isn't just rice with a topping. You can make it a little bit more filling. And I will be also creating a separate episode of just onigiri. So just in case you don't remember what you uh, may have learned from episode one, when we talked about making rice the Japanese way, you can watch the whole um, episode from beginning to end and learn how to make the rice and how to form onigiri 
and then how to make some fillings uh, or these Japanese side dishes that can become uh, mix-ins with onigiri to make them a little bit more filling if you don't just want to eat rice. So that should be coming uh, soon as well. So now it's time to say goodbye. Dozo konkai no zenai yo watashi tachi no website to kara check shite kudasai. Please check our website for all of the uh, episode's content. That's where I load the show notes and sometimes I add uh, some extra information and links. So please check that out. Nihongo no hiragana, katakana, kanji demo kaite arimasu. You will also find all of the Japanese written out by my husband. Jikai no oshirase ga todokimasu node todoku wo yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Please subscribe to receive notifications about future episodes. Goran itadaki arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you for watching. Jikai ni matta. Oi, Shima Show. See you next time.